let's start off with what really inspired you to hack uh, the brain in the first place. Was yeah. there something that happened to you that wanted to do this? It was. Um, a lot of people, when they see me do these demos where I memorize a room full of people's names or numbers, like you mentioned, or lots of words, I tell people, I don't do this to impress you. Mm -hmm. I do this more to really express to you what's really possible mm -hmm. because anyone can do this because we've been, we've been told, we've been told a lie that our memory, our intelligence, our genius is fixed, kind of like our shoe size. And through my experience of doing this for the past two decades, nothing could be further from the truth. Mm. You know, people have unbelievable gifts inside them. They're just not shown how. I always thought it was interesting that school would teach us like what to learn. Like those subjects are important, math and history and science and Spanish, the what to learn, but not, never on how to learn. Mm. You know, how to focus, how to concentrate, how to be creative, how to think for yourself, how to read faster, how to, how to remember things. Right. Like maybe it should have been the fourth R. Remember reading, writing, arithmetic, uh -huh. but also recall because there is no learning without remembering, and Socrates said that. Wow. But how I got started on this is I actually grew up with learning challenges, and a lot of people don't know that, but when I was uh, in kindergarten, I had a really bad accident, and I had a head injury, and it left me feeling like I was broken, that my brain didn't work, and I had these focus issues, I couldn't remember things, and it took me an extra two years to learn how to read, wow. and I struggled, you know, privately and then also publicly. And uh, you know, when you're that age, you you know you get very self-conscious. Sure. You know, you become very introverted, very shy. You don't want to connect with people because you feel like there's something wrong with you. And so that was that was my academic life. You know, I just worked so much harder. And I don't know if people watching this can relate, but just you know, struggling with overwhelm or mm -hmm. overload, too much to learn, too little time, and it stresses you out. And you're like, why can't I do this? Why is everyone else succeeding so much faster? And I have to do you know, all this like not even fair. Right. And that's that's what happened. Wow. And, uh, so that that's kind of early on made you want to then master it since you were having such a hard it time. It did. I mean, I think our struggles really could be some strengths, and you know this. Mm, of course. You know, yeah. like you know when when challenge you know with these kind of challenges come change, you know, and, and problems become you know help you progress. And so when I got to college, I remember first freshman year in college, I wanted to start fresh. And I thought that I could really make my family proud because they sacrificed a lot, and uh, but I was doing so poorly. And I took all these classes, and I thought I would do better and have a clean slate, but I actually did worse. And uh, and I remember I wanted to quit school. And uh, at that time, you'd appreciate this. A friend asked me to uh, to come visit him and his family out on the West Coast because I was on the East Coast, and mm -hmm. and he was like, I go out there. I was like, Yeah, I'll just take a weekend, get a little space from school. I was thinking about quitting and when I get there the family is um, extremely successful and I don't just mean financial they had an amazing home on the, on the mm -hmm. water but they were happy you know they were they were givers they were learning all the time and um, and the father before dinner asked me these kind of questions we were walking on his property and he, he asked the kind of questions you would ask somebody who just started college like how's school and you know that kind of stuff right. and I, I, I broke down crying I was like, you know, and to a stranger I just met like, you know, 10 minutes ago, wow. I said, I'm ready to quit. School is just not for me. I'm not one of those, I'm not smart enough. And he's like, well, why are you in school? You know, why, what do you want to be? What do you want to do? What do you want to share, if you will? And um, it's funny when people, when you're not asked a question in life, you know, it takes a moment to pause to, to come up with an answer. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Like when you're asking questions and no one's ever asked me those questions before. Hmm. And when I started to answer, he paused. He said, wait. And he takes out out of his back pocket, I swear to you, like a journal and like a diary. And I always thought like 12 year old girls carry diaries, <laughs> sure, yeah. diaries. And he makes me write, he tears out a couple of pieces of paper and he makes me write down all the, the goals like of what I wanted to do in my life. Mm. And I've never, something very powerful about taking pen to paper and just writing like those dreams, sure. your aspirations down. And after maybe 20, 30 minutes, he asked me if I'm done, and I maybe have 40, 50 things there, which is like a bucket list. It right. was before I knew what a bucket list was. And I start folding the sheets of paper, thinking I'm done with the exercise, put it back in my pocket, and he grabs it from me. And I was like, I freaked out. <laughs> because like on that was like, like Your everything. Life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't even know who this guy is, and he's very successful. And he starts to just read it. And I'm so intimidated. And I How feel loud? No, you, or no in his mind. Yeah, yeah. And I and I feel this small because Everything, I just, I didn't know somebody was gonna look at it, right? Mm. And he looks at it and he says, Jim, and I'm, I don't know what he was gonna say, because this guy's very he's successful. He says, Jim, you are this close to everything on that list. And I'm just thinking, there's no way. Wow. How, how could it, give me 10 lifetimes, I couldn't put a dent on that list. And then he goes like this. Ooh. Yeah, and he says like, like as if this was, you know, the key here. And he takes me into his home 
and it's uh, this beautiful home. He takes me into a room I've never seen before, and it's wall to wall, ceiling to floor, covered in books. I mean, I've never seen like a library in somebody's house before. And he starts grabbing these books, you'll love this, he starts grabbing books and starts handing them to me and starts to pile up really, <laughs> really, really high. And when I start looking at the titles, because I'm curious, there are these biographies of amazing men and women in history and some really early personal development books like Napoleon Hill, you know, Thinking Grow Rich and Power Positive Thinking.